Welcome to worship this morning at Zion. It's good that we can all be together and um, thank you to uh, Living Stones uh, for leading our worship today. Um, we are glad that we can be here. As we gather this morning for worship, we also gather for Holy Communion. Jesus has invited us into his presence and so we celebrate the presence of Christ in this sacrament and we receive the body and blood of Christ at his invitation. So by his invitation, everyone is welcome to receive this gift of grace and we thank the Lord for that gift. Uh, the only other announcement that I would like to highlight that is in our bulletin um, is that Vacation Bible School will be starting next Sunday. The information is there. Information is available online. Uh, go to our church's website and uh, otherwise you can call the church office during the week to get that information and sign up those kiddos for Vacation Bible School. It's a great, great thing. And we um, look forward to gathering with the churches of our community. It is being hosted by Gethsemane over in Baldwin, but many churches, many children come together, and we are grateful for that. We continue our worship now, singing hymn number 821, Shout to the Lord. We continue in the front portion of our hymnal on page 184. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Okay, let's do it. We're going to pray. <laughs> we're, we're all new at this. So. Eternal God, you draw near to us in Christ, and you made yourself our guest. Amid the cards of our lives, make us attentive to your presence, that we may treasure your word above all else. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, my apologies for not leading into that prayer. Eh? We really have never done this together. So, uh, But we will confess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. The words are printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. 
He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We hear scripture readings for today. The scripture reading today is from Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 28. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regards to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. We proclaim him, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Carol. I'd like to invite our kids to come up. At this time, I've got a... Bible story I'd like to share with you. It's an oldie but a goodie, what they say. Is that where you got that? Let's have a seat here. This is one of my, this is one of my favorite Bibles. Um, it's a kid's Bible. It, uh, belonged to our kids when they were little, younger than some of you. Um, so this is called the Beginner's Bible. And it's got great pictures on every page. Check that out. Great pictures, huh? I like, I like to look at the pictures too because I think they help us tell the story. This one is called Listening. Ever, anybody ever tell you to listen? Pay attention? Wake up, shape up, focus, listen. Once there were two sisters. One was named Mary. One was named Martha. Jesus was their good friend. He came to see them whenever he was in town. There they are. One time while Jesus was at their house, he had a long talk with Mary. There they are. Mary sat by Jesus. She listened and listened. Jesus had so many wonderful things to say. Martha was thinking about other things. She knew there was a lot of work to do. She wanted to get their dinner ready. She wanted to clean the house. 
She wanted to make a nice bed for Jesus. And while Martha worked, 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 Mary sat and listened. Finally, Martha got upset. Can you tell? She's just a little bit upset. Jesus, she said, Mary is not helping. I'm doing all this work by myself. Tell her to come and help me. Martha, Martha, Jesus said, you are upset about many things. Mary is doing something very important. She is listening to me. She chose to do the best thing. That's the story about Mary and Martha, about listening to Jesus. Um, you notice there's kind of two different kinds of people there, right? Mary is the one who sort of likes to sit back and, and take it easy, just kind of soak things in. Are you kind of like Mary or are you the Martha kind of person? You just can't sit still. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to keep going. And it's like, oh man, I got to get over here and I got to go there. What are you more like? Are you more like Mary or Martha? You like, you're more like Mary? You like to just kind of sit back? And, I don't think that's true, Kyle. I'm calling you out on this one. You're the go-getter. You're the go-getter, aren't you? No, you like to just kind of ease into things, huh? How about the rest of you? You like to keep busy or do you like to just kind of relax sometimes? You're a, you're a relaxer. I kind of am too. I, um, I've got a plaque in my office. It's, it says, easy does it, but do it. There are things that need to get done. Easy does it, but do it. So there are different kinds of people. You know, we have different personalities. And sometimes when the two kinds of people get together, we kind of get, maybe we get a little upset with each other. Martha was upset with Mary because Mary just wasn't helping and there's all these things that have got to get done. And Mary, I don't think she was upset about it. She was just like, well, it'll get done <laughs> if you do it. <laughs> I don't know if that's what she was thinking or not, but sometimes we do get upset with people who are different from us. And I think in those times it's important for us to realize that we do need to work together, but we also need to look at each other as children of God. Jesus knew both Mary and Martha very well, and he loved them both. Um, we, we can do the same. We can love each other too. Now let's take a moment to pray. Thank you, Lord, for the many, many blessings that you have given to us and for the different personalities that we have and, and for the different people that we are. We all come together, sometimes, even like today in church, and sometimes we will get on each other's nerves, but help us, Lord, to love each other in the same way that you love us, to accept each other in the same way that you accept us. And in that way, we will find that you are the one who leads us. We pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Good to see you all today. You may be seated. And... See you later. We. Don't get hurt now. We will now listen to Jesus. And as we hear the gospel reading, would you please stand? We do this to honor the presence of Christ. From Luke chapter 10. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, 
and it will not be taken away from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Thought just crossed my mind that all of the the Mary type of or the Martha type of people are probably at the county fair. <laughs> They're busy. <laughs> They're working. They got things to do. That was just a freebie. That was just uh, just noticing the world around us. What do I need? I would guess that many of us would identify our basic needs in terms of food, clothing, and shelter. That's my guess. That's what, that's what came to my mind. I've heard that before. Included in the food thing, though, are some other important things. I would think that air and water might be included in the food thing. And depending on your state of health, perhaps there is some medicine, some vitamins, uh, calcium for strong bones, uh, food supplements perhaps. Many of our foods are loaded with supplements. I, I know some people are trying to get away from that to a simpler diet. Um, and maybe there are restrictions in in some of your diets due to uh, illness or allergy or dependency concerns. Also in the food thing, we start to think about diet. And we start to think about things like health care, exercise, dealing with weight that is healthy for us. And because of all of this health stuff, many people think about health insurance because you know that one illness can send your family finances into chaos if you are not covered by some kind of insurance. I know that there are some people who do not have insurance, and some, because they have put off a checkup, find that what could have been a simple matter has now become critical or even fatal. So this goes on and on, but this is all to say we need food, nurture, clothing. We shop in stores. More and more, I think, people are shopping online. Uh, many years ago, we used to drive through this area. We didn't know that Woodville existed, but it did. <laughs> and we drove by here many, many times, and where we would stop often along the way is what we called the shoe mall. It was a mall uh, that part of it doesn't exist anymore. It's over in Woodbury. Um, half of the mall was torn down to make room for the big Walmart over in Woodbury. And we used to stop there. We called it the shoe mall because there were many outlet shoe stores. Any of you remember that? There had to be at least a half a dozen outlet shoe stores. And at that time, our kids were little and they were wearing out shoes and they were growing out of shoes very, very quickly. And so we were grateful for the shoe mall. We would stop on many occasions and we found that this mall was inundated with that one item. Although one item, there were thousands of varieties of sizes and color combinations and shapes. Shelter is a necessity. Some have decried the heat of this past week or so and have said they absolutely needed air conditioning. I know there are people who have breathing problems that were more glad for air conditioning than for anything else. As I look at all of this, I think, well, I, I need a grill, too. I like to cook out. And refrigeration is nice on days like this. As some people have swimming pools, I was grateful that we could water our garden. That's sort of a home need, sort of a food need. And you know me and my Rubbermaid tubs, right? This is all to say we need three things. <laughs> food, shelter, and clothing. It all gets really complicated, though, 
real fast. Mary and Martha were doing their thing, and Jesus and his disciples stop in. So let's think here for a minute. What would you do if 13 people came unannounced to your home at mealtime? And there may have been more than 13 people. We are led to believe that Jesus and his disciples had other people who joined them from time to time. But there are, are at least 13 unexpected guests now, right now. They have been walking. They are dirty. They are tired. They are hungry. Needing food. They could use a change of clothing and shelter. Hey, Martha. <laughs> Good to see you. Have you got a couch or 13 we could borrow for the night? Martha is glad, really glad, that these guests are here because this is Jesus. And this is very important for her to have Jesus in her home. And she just invited him and his friends into her home and now she is practically pulling her hair out completely frazzled, glad, but frazzled, overwhelmed by all the things she needs to do. It's not just preparing for the two of them now. There are an additional 13 guests for supper, and oh my goodness, the shoes, the sandals need to be straightened out. She wants them to know that they are welcomed in her home. Martha invited Jesus into her life, and so did you. Any time you thought about Christ, any time his word found a place in your heart, you opened your life to Jesus. And now here he is, and the world has not really changed all that much. Perhaps you still feel inundated with many, many things in life. So what are those things? What are the things that fill your life, the things that fill your days, fill your mind? If you have children, young children, or spend time with grandchildren, summertime can be a really crazy time for doing all kinds of things. Doing sports and act other activities and scouts and 4-H and dance and the fair. Many, many, many things. And parents are outnumbered in many families. And children are going in too many different directions to keep everything all straight. And sometimes it's like, hey, you know what? I can go with one of the guys, the rest of you, I don't know, find a ride somehow. I don't know how we're going to make it work but you try. If your children are older, you still have a million and one things to do. They're still a part of your life, but you have other freedom now that you can do things that maybe you weren't able to do when the kids were little. And I know that there are others who are, have left those days behind them. Some of our older people, some people who live with chronic illness find that Illness and weakness kind of fills their days, and boy, they would wish for any of those things to come back. Not able to do the many, many things that used to fill their days. And so the things that we need, food, clothing, and shelter, it seems that it does get complicated very quickly, really, for all of us. And sometimes when you're in the midst of the frazzled life, you just look around you and someone is just sitting there. <laughs> they seem oblivious to everything else that needs to be done and you just say it. I could use a little help here. Say it nicely if you have to say it. Jesus knows how complicated our lives are. And even though we think that food and shelter and clothing are our needs, I am sure that most, if not all of us, could do with a whole lot less. 
of all of those things. And we find that the more of those things we have, <laughs> the more complicated it gets. Martha is the get her done kind of person, I think. Martha. Um, truthfully, there is so much to do in life. We all have lots to do. And some people have taken time management classes in order to learn how to live our own lives that are really not our own lives anymore because we are running ragged for everyone else. It's that Martha kind of frazzled feeling. Mary is truly enamored with Jesus. She loves the sound of his voice, the gentle strength in his words, the loving smile on his face. And there Mary is, just kneeling at the feet of Jesus, and she's taking in the wonder of it all. Jesus. Jesus is here. And she feels his presence. I'm with him, she says. And in that moment, everything else in the world just kind of disappears. And she knows the peace of the presence of Christ. Such a moment of bliss. And then Martha crows at Mary and the bliss is broken. <laughs> you, you know the feeling? What? Oh. And Jesus, we know, is truly a lover. He is not a fighter. And it is as though he says, Come now, girls. Get along. And in that gentle way, he lets Martha know that first things need to come first. First things first. I heard that as a kid. I don't know why I heard that as a kid. I don't think any other kids did. Maybe I was distracted by many things too. First things first. First, listen to Jesus. That's something we get out of this scripture reading for today. First, listen to Jesus. Then all the other things in life are going to find a focus. Then, having listened to Jesus, everything we do, to serve our family, to serve our neighbors, to serve our community, everything else we do, the sweating and the toil and the organizing, everything will have a focus as we at one and the same time are serving God and serving our neighbor. Both at the same time. And now again we are reminded how complicated life is. You cannot just sit on the floor all goo-goo eyes at Jesus all day long. You do have to get some things done. Right? Because these 13 guests, all of them have needs. And you are now their servant. And you're, you have needs in life. And your family has needs in life. Remember the food, the clothing, the shelter, the needs are all very real. And your responsibility, our responsibility for the people around us is very, very real. And we are reminded that our own lives are complicated at times too because each one of us is Mary and Martha, sometimes both at the same times. So what do we need? Food, clothing, shelter? <laughs> Jesus is always turning our world upside down. And he says we need one thing. Not three. Jesus says we need one thing. Well, Jesus does not say exactly what that one thing is in this particular gospel reading. But he does tell us that Mary had it right. As I look at her, I see one person, complete 
completely adoring Jesus. And she wants to hear the voice of God. She wants to learn about the fullness of life from Jesus and God's Word. In the reading, in the hearing of God's Word, it gives us life. And that is something that will not be taken away from us. The new life in Christ is something that will never be spent. It will never be used up or exhausted. And everything else in this life, everything else in this life will disappear. The things that are in the Rubbermaid tubs, you know, I got this deal about that. Uh, they have already disappeared. If they are in Rubbermaid tubs, or I'm not promoting Rubbermaid, you know, it's not a commercial. If they're in the tubs, they have already disappeared. They are of no use to you or to anyone else. The air we breathe will one day disappear from our own lungs. We know that's true. The food takes its own predictable course. The shelter will need fixing and one day will be overcome by ages of use. And the clothing, Jesus reminds us in Matthew chapter 6. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. Do not worry about what you will eat or what you will drink. Do not worry about your body or what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by work worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothing? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. That's from Matthew 6. You can read that this week for yourself. Matthew 6. These words are fully reflected in the story of Martha and Mary. And as Jesus talks with the panicking Martha, and you and me in our Martha kinds of times. He reminds us that there are times when we are distracted by many things and when we are distracted and when we are too busy and when we are worrying, then our eyes are not on Jesus and then our hearts are heavy with the weight of things that we merely want. But what we need is Jesus. And finding him as the focus for our lives, all the other details will find clearer meaning and appropriate value. All those other things will come to naught one day. But having spent that time in God's presence, adoring Jesus, listening to him, that will live on in us forever. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, help us to see the one thing that is needed and place that first in our lives. When you are in our midst, help us to look to you and open our hearts to your word 
and life. And in that way, our lives will become a reflection of you. And the new life is reborn in us each day. Bless us, Lord, so that we can be a blessing. We ask for that as a need, but truly it is our desire to live for you. We know that you live for us. In Jesus' life-giving name, we pray. Amen. We continue as we sing hymn number 744, Lord Be Glorified. time we ask our ushers to wait upon us for our morning offering.
we hear these words from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And we pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Again, a reminder that during Holy Communion, Jesus invites you. All are welcome to receive this gift of grace, all who come in the Lord's name. And um, as uh, the ushers will direct you forward, those who abstain from alcohol, the center ring of each tray is prepared for you. And we continue now as uh, we sing the Lamb of God, page 191. Yeah, you may be seated, please. sin of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sin of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sin of the world Lamb of God. Um, servers. I believe I'll need a couple more helpers today. Okay, thank you. Thank you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen.
We continue as we pray. Thank you, gracious Lord, for this gift of your gracious love. We thank you for your forgiveness. We ask that you would help us to receive this gift and to share this gift gladly with those around us. In those times of life when we are maybe frustrated with uh, the differences of, of people around us, help us to look at each person as a child that you love, that you have given your life, and we uh, may have, that we may have new hearts. Open our hearts to you and to each other. Open our will to your ways, that whatever we do, we would do it to serve you, and in so doing, we would serve one another. Bless us, Lord, with new strength for this day, Whatever comes our way, Lord, help us 
to place it into your care. We take a moment for our own silent prayer at this time. And our prayer includes these words from Psalm 15. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Those who lead a blameless life and do what is right, who speak the truth from their heart. They do not slander with the tongue. They do no evil to their friends. They do not cast discredit upon a neighbor. In their sight, the wicked are rejected but they honor those who fear the Lord. They have sworn upon their health and do not take back their word. They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take bribes against the innocent. Those who do those things shall never be overthrown. Amen. Would you please stand as we receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing hymn number 538 and uh, please stay around for the postlude. That's why we praise him. us forth with hands to serve and give to make of all the earth a better place to live the Lord now sends us forth with hands to serve and give to make of all the earth a better place to live the angels are not sent into our world of pain to do what we were meant to do in Jesus' name that falls to you and me and all who are made free. Help us, O oh Lord, we pray, to do your will today. The angels are not sent into our world of pain to do what we were meant to do in Jesus' name that falls to you and me and all who are made free. Help us, O oh Lord, we pray, 